Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast, Guy, Sharon and Clint, uh, joined by our flight attendant from the AMA. You're still here, Zoe? Yes, I know. I'm lingering. Thank you for hanging around because we've got a few more questions to ask. And the first thing that strikes me as interesting about uh, the industry used to be in flight attendant three. Is that the mm-hmm. technical term? Cabin crew. <laughs> um, Stewarding. The thing that uh, strikes me interesting is the um, rampant uh, che- uh, cheating and stuff like that. Yeah, it does. It definitely happens. Um, definitely in ports, like where I said, where people drink a lot, mm. you know, stuff happens. Um, you know, I, I know one girl that I was flying with, um, she had a boyfriend back home and, you know, we basically go out and cheat on him all the time and it wasn't until they broke up that we all found out about it. Uh, one time she went out in Hong Kong and I went home with this, like, break dancer and it wasn't until the oh morning God. when like she woke up and he had to like say hello to her on Google Translate. <laughs> Amazing. He say, How yeah. sick must your break dance moves be yeah. <laughs> if you can score a chick without even being able to yeah. speak her language. That is so and, bad. and he would text her like months later like I practice my English for you. Wow. <laughs> that is so funny. And how awkward if like she felt guilty about it and told her boyfriend she's like um, I cheated on you with this break dancer in Hong Kong. She didn't feel guilty. Oh, God. Oh, really? <laughs> that is so stink. I don't know how people do that. Mm, I don't know. Oh. So um, a couple of bullcrap questions that I got from the office in there. Mm-hmm. Someone wanted to ask if going in the brace position mm-hmm. was so if the plane crashed, it meant that you'd break your neck straight away and you'd die cleaner. They don't teach us that. In, uh... That's not a thing. I'm <laughs> no, glad we no, dismissed no. that. Here's another bullcrap one. Um, why does the um, why do you always want the bloody chair um, upright and the um, stupid window curtain up? Oh, oh, I think I know what it is. Can I guess? Yes. Um, is it so that you don't have to go around and put all the seats up after everyone gets off the plane? No, it's because if there is a, if there is an emergency and everyone has to evacuate quickly, if everyone's seats are back, you like it's difficult to. You I can't reckon get out it's because you're quickly. lazy and you don't want to no. have to open the blinds for everyone afterwards. No, you need the blinds open because if there's a fire on board when you land on the ground, the f- um, the what are they called? Um, Firemen, they need to be able to look in the window and locate it. Oh, oh. what is the thing that you get real you get real crabby about when we're when we're on the plane? You always have a bitch about it. Whoa. Turning your phone off. We were on the plane. Don't me into the flight attendant. No, it's something. Oh, because they always wake you up to tell you to put your seat up, even if there isn't an accident. You're like, no, why do they have to wake me up to put my seat up? Oh, I just would do it. I just walk down the aisle and pull the seats forward. I just leave. Sharon, I'm just a very grumpy waker. Yeah. It's nothing okay. against the flight attendant people. My my big my big question is, um, what's going on with the food? Because you guys are preparing hot meals on there. I don't see a bloody kitchen. I don't see a sink and yeah. some ovens. How do you do it? it, it it's it's galleys. So the galley has little ovens and chillers. The chiller, the food comes on and wheelie the carts that come down the aisle. Yeah, it comes on basically frozen. Um, and yeah, we just someone's job. Each seat on the aircraft jump seat is associated with a different role on board. So one person's job will be to cook the food. You and, know. and by cook the food, what do you mean? Uh, there's steam ovens, so it just has a timer, and you just steam the food. So you just roll a whole tray into a big yeah. ass oven. So, so the the meal tray is uh, just the plastic bit, and on the the hot meals that come on a rack. Where does the um where does the uh the toilet waste go from the plane? Does it just go it out just the window? Held, held in a tank and gets emptied when we land. Oh, I always thought it just went into the sea. I always thought no. you just dropped it on Hamilton. No, no, <laughs> no unnecessary, mate. Hamilton's a great place. Um, why do I have and to turn my phone off? Would it be more off? like Rotorua? Because that's the one that smells bad. You leave Rotorua alone. <laughs> Um, why do I have to turn my phone off? Because yeah. if it's really that much of an issue, yeah. why haven't scientists figured it out yet? And if it was a big issue, why are you leaving it up to me? Yeah. If I could bring down the plane, why are you trusting yeah. me to turn it off? Because I don't. Yeah. Because uh, turning the phone off is if everyone's got their phone on and it's not on flight mode, the uh, tech crew get they get feedback in their um, headphones. But the real reason we ask you during takeoff and landing is to turn off all your electronic devices. It's so you're paying attention. So if there's an mm. emergency, everyone is watching the flight attendant mm. in front of you instead of like, you know, because if you've got the TV screen on and you're watching the movie, yeah. the emergency commands will come through the headphones through the TV. But mm. if you've got your iPad and you're watching that, if you've got it up loud, you won't hear yeah, our Yeah, but commands. if the plane's plummeting all... out of the sky, I'm not going to be like, it's got to finish this level <laughs> of Angry Birds. No, but it's also 
it as a courtesy thing. Like when you go to the movies, I don't want to hear some d bag talking real loud on a cell phone. But you can't yeah. talk on a plane anyway because no. it's no There's reception. No service. I think I should be able to get a license that says I've been on this many flights. Mm. I don't have to watch a safety briefing anymore. Mm. Turn my movies on and I swipe my license and my movies come on. Yeah, because I'm time so you bored fly, of watching the video. Each time you fly, you're in a different seat, so you need to count the number of rows between you and the exit. <laughs> Zoe, it's really interesting. There's more with you in the AMA inside today's podcast. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Also in there, we talk food porn, um, and we put together a guest list for a little party that we're throwing. Guy Sharon and Clint, the edge. Guy Sharon and Clint on the edge. I'm so hungry right now, so this is probably a bad idea. And if you're hungry, then don't thank us now. Okay. <laughs> We've got an idea. We've had a concept that we thought we'd throw out to the listeners. It's called food porn. Food porn. Food porn. Food porn. Porn. Porn of food. And it's basically um, two things that you would like to see together real bad. Mm. In a delicious way. In a good times way. Like In banana a... and chocolate. Damn. Bacon and chocolate. Damn. <laughs> we can't just all do chocolate ones. No, but we can. Uh, apple and chocolate. Everything in chocolate goes well. Apple and chocolate do not go no, well. Peanut and, and chocolate. It, what about I, chocolate apple? Why don't you just have a peanut slab? <laughs> we want to talk about um, food menage duo. <laughs> I saw one so today. So hot that if you Googled it, you'd have to clear your browsing history before someone else found out that you'd been looking at it. I saw, uh, there's this Instagram that I follow called Jimmy's Burgers, which I suggest you should follow. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. And he put up this burger and the bun was made out of weaved streaky bacon. I've seen that. So yeah. the bun was bacon. And another one is a basket made out of bacon that's full of french fries with like melted cheese on top. So do you eat out of the basket or do you just like eat the whole basket? You, you eat out of the basket and then you eat the bacon basket at the end. <laughs> we want you to contribute to our food pornography right now. Call in with two foods and maybe technically classically normally they don't go together but when you put them together it's made a delicious hybrid and your mouth just got wet like french fries and mcdonald's sundays oh Oh, yeah i didn't popcorn and m&ms i didn't realize until i went to america how good bacon and ice cream go together yeah girl they are the boss cheyenne make us hungry what's your food porn idea all oh, right, take two bits of bread on one side, put Vegemite, and on the other half, put honey. Vegemite and honey? Vegemite and honey. Wow, that sounds like a total opposite <laughs> case explosion. Just just talk me through it for a second. Are we buttering the bread? Oh, it's, it's whatever your preference is, really. Okay, and uh, preferably what kind of bread? Any bread's good. Okay. okay. So what, bread at all. what would you say to the critics out there, the people out there who say, this is the most disgusting crap I've ever heard of in my life? <laughs> I would say it's like having the finger boys dancing on your tongue. Wow. <laughs> awesome. That is a good description. Thanks so much. Justin, what's your food porn idea? Um, I was thinking streaky bacon and maple syrup sauce. Or, yes. or like a sauce, not on top of the bacon. No, nah, like, uh, I suppose you could buy them in a bag and have a sauce that comes with them. Oh, yeah. Dip them in. <laughs> That's good. Anything to do with bacon, I'm I'm down for. That sounds like a great yeah. idea. Thank you so much, Justine. <laughs> and, David, what's your idea? Uh, steak and ice cream. Steak and <laughs> ice cream. Have you, does it matter which great. flavor ice cream it is, David? No, uh, usually vanilla. Vanilla. Okay, okay, David, can we just rewind two steps? How'd you come up with the concept of steak and ice cream? Oh, I just came here one day in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> Did you eat the steak and ice cream in the shower? Oh, no, I shouldn't have. No. Oh, sorry. Swearing. Is this, um, don't worry about it, mate. You've already suggested steak and ice cream, and there can't be anything worse than that. So uh, thank you very much for your suggestion. That's my, that's my food pornography anyway. Oh, yeah. Good on you, David. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Ice cream. I love this stuff so much. What text have we got, Guy? Um, strawberries and bacon. That sounds all right. Just bacon. Bacon and cheese work with anything. Bacon uh, is becoming the real porn star of this feature, isn't he? He's uh, the, the Ron Jeremy of yeah, food. Yeah. Here, here's a weird one. The that I, bacon and everything. <laughs> here's a weird one that I'd be, um, I'd be tempted on trying. Nutella and cheese on toast. Yum. Nah. It's I trouble. I, I think I'd try that, but it would have to be like super thick white bread. Twisties and cream cheese? Oh, yeah, down for that, yeah. Okay. Sweet fruitcake with thick cheese. 
I don't this know is like people's weird suggestions. These are quite weird, eh? You've got to try them. It's got to be seen to be believed. Not a hundred on that one. Sophie, what's your food porn idea? Um, I love mama and cheese so much. I even put it on, like, mashed potato. Mama and cheese with mashed potato actually sounds quite nice. I'm not kidding you. It is delicious. Do you mix it in with the mashed potato or does it sit on the top? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all, like, mixed in and it kind of turns into, like, a brown mashed potato <coughs> with, like, melted mm. cheese through it and it is... Divine. That does sound like a good time. I'd also like it's to really good. I'd also like to add in the suggestion for food porn if we mix it with some humans. I would like to see well actually I'm not that in love with him anymore. Let's go with Ryan Gosling, drizzled in bacon and chocolate. <laughs> Ryan Gosling porno as the plate with some bacon and some chocolate on top. Hot damn, that's a good time. Good guy, Sharon and Clint on the edge. So lovely to see you all. Oh, hello, 1800s Sharon. Good to see you. I've had a really good (laughs) night last night. I don't know why in the 1800s I was English, but I was. No, you were just far more proper. I think you've just come over from England. Oh, tally-ho. Yes, yes I have. (laughs) Would you like to buy something off me? I've got some blankets. (laughs) I'll swap you for it. Why are you selling blankets? I don't know. This is what I've got to trade. Oh, okay. That's all I have. Is that's that just some sort of, like, on. racist treaty of Waitangi jab? No, didn't they swap muskets? And blankets. Oh, my bad. I should have stayed at school a little bit and longer. And promises that they didn't keep. Well, I keep my promises, everybody. Last night, I went back into the olden days, and it was a bad time. <laughs> I woke up after the big storm yesterday morning, and my power had already been out by the time I'd woken up for nine hours. <laughs> Get home from work. I'm looking at my Vector app and it's saying, don't worry, Shaz Dog, your power's going to be back on at 6.30. And I'm like, heck yeah, I've got time to watch Shortland Street. Did the Vector app work in the 1800s? Yes, I'm from the future back in 1800s. Oh, okay, good. Like yep. that movie Kate and Leopold. What model of iPhone were they on in the 1800s? Uh, iPhone negative five. Oh, okay, good. And anywho, I get home and I check the app again and I'm like, sorry, mate, your power's not going to be on until 11 o'clock. I'm like, 11 o'clock? Oh, my God. So I came back to work, borrowed one of the laptops from Edge TV, took it home, had this great plan of watching One Tree Hill Season 2 on it <laughs> and what? eating McDonald's. My husband's come home and he, he, for some reason, thought that I needed him to come home because there was no power. Idiot. And so instead of doing that, we didn't have a romantic night or anything, to candles, I had to sit on the couch watching Bryce on the computer that I had bought home sift through iTunes of somebody else playing songs and staring at the screen. Tell you what, 1800s were a bad time. I had a main, terrible time. That was the main problem with the 1800s was you had to share a laptop. Yeah, it was, it was bad. <laughs> and I was like walking around. Yeah. In the end, I was like, I've got the flu. I don't feel very well. I'll take some painkillers and go to bed. And so I did so at 8.30. Woke up this morning, still no power. Had no power for 32 hours. Why did you take painkillers? To go to sleep because I've got a chest infection. Oh, okay. Because yeah. it kind of sounded like you had an addiction to prescription. It sounded like drug abuse. No, 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 like no, 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 and I just shot up some lovely heroin and went off to bed. And it was a lovely time. If it was the 1800s, it would have been opium, but whatever. <laughs> well I just thought. had a toke on ye oldie opium pipe. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. I took myself to a better place. This guy would not have been able to survive <clears throat> in the 1800s. Have you got power? Now? I've got power now. Mm. After a very over a Welcome day back, without Marty power. McFly. I know, and it was so annoying because I bought all this delicious food and meat for the next couple of weeks. All ruined now because my fridge wasn't going. My dog vomited on my duvet cover that I couldn't wash for two days. Now it's all stained with vomit. Tell you what, guys. It's a surprise I've made it through, but I have. <laughs> We're glad you did. Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. We're going to announce the stars that we have on the show tomorrow. Are you ready, Sharon? I'm ready. Are you ready, Clint? I already know who they are. Are you ready, are you ready random guy in the, in the studio? I don't know your name? Yes. Okay. Okay. The, the stars we're going to have on tomorrow's show are Jermaine Clement... From Flight of the Concords, winner of a Grammy Award and appeared in um, Men in Black 3. And the Muppets. No, that you, you got confused with Brett. No. <laughs> I think you got oh, is it? No. oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Do you mean and the Muppets, Muppets. Muppets too? Thank I, you very much. All right, St. Sharon, on behalf of my, myself and New Zealand, I'd like to apologise to you because I made a mistake. Apology accepted. And, and to Jermaine. And also, with him, we will also have... Also. Taika Waititi, director and star of Boy. Woo! Yeah! I was waiting for you to. I was waiting for you to do more of Taika's CV. 
Oh, well, well they both in the Humor Beast together. Taika also directed Eagle vs. Shark. He was nominated for an Oscar for his short film Two Boys... Uh, two, no, I was going to say Two, two Cars, bo- One... Oh, two no. cars, one night. I was going to say two boys, one Just, cup. Oh, my God. We were all on the verge of saying it. <laughs> so this is quite exciting. And if you want to get some questions in, you can chuck them on our Facebook page or text them through to 3343. Or you can tweet them. Just use the hashtag GSC show. They're here to celebrate the release of their film, What We Do in the Shadows. <laughs> do you guys know what, what We're in the Shadows is about? It's, a, it's something do to do shadows, with sorry? vampires or something, isn't it? It's about a group of vampires who live in Miramar in Wellington, <laughs> and they all flat together. Because I'm quite excited to see this because Corey gonzalez Macura, the comedian's in it, and from the trailer what I can tell is that Corey just plays a vampire version of himself because <laughs> there's a scene where he tries to get through a window after a night out, and I, I have seen Corey do that before. <laughs> Here's a little bit of the film. When you get three vampires in a flat, obviously there's going to be a lot of tension. <laughs> Viago was an 18th century dandy. Look, a ghost cop. Vladislav is a bit of a pervert. This is my torture chamber. Deacon's like the young bad boy of the group. I'm supposed to pay rent, but I don't. So it's like a reality show as well. So there's all these like piece to camera bits. And if you live in Wellington, you may have seen that your really cool Wellington side on the hill has been changed to Wellington. You in might celebration have seen that. of the movie. Reese Darby's in it as well. For me personally, it's the most excited I've ever been about a New Zealand film. It yeah. killed it at, um, I can't remember if I said killed it out loud. It killed it, it girl. It, it, it killed it at, um, at Cane, Cane's, Cannes. Cannes. At that big, the most important movie Kenny's. festival. It's got tons of good reviews saying it's really funny, so I cannot wait to see it when it starts. And we, I can't believe we're going to have the stars and director in. And when they were promoting the show at um, the film festivals, they ended up parting with Harry Styles. So even if you don't give a crap about films and you're a directioner, <laughs> listen to the interview tomorrow because we'll ask them about Harry Styles. I'm just going to try to embarrass myself because last time I interviewed someone from Fire of the Concords, I used the word sluzzer and it became the joke for the rest of their press <laughs> tour, apparently, where they would be like, oh, you big sluzzer. So I'm just not going to say anything for the whole interview. If you've got questions, you're welcome to text them in now, or you can just call up tomorrow. We'll have them in the studio at 5 o'clock tomorrow. Jermaine and Taika Waititi from What We Do in the Shadows. Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. We've got a party list to make, guys. Edge TV is starting, and we need to know who you think should be on the guest list. We want the best crap liberties from all around New Zealand. Briscoe's lady. Oh. She's top of the list. She, I reckon we could get her. Big safe furniture lady on the 27th of June. Yes, I won. 27th of June. What did you win? Guy and I were having a um, a, a race to see who could talk first. <laughs> but then he... he well, technically <laughs> I won. I I was disabled because my <laughs> microphone, my, my um, headphones fell apart. So I think Sharon cheated. I'm okay. oh, sorry, I'm too close. Now, on the 27th of June, the amazing Edge TV is going to be launching. And to celebrate hey, that hey, launch... Hey, 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 hey. Let's not say amazing. It's, it's the gonna, Edge TV. It is going to be awesome. Is it going to be... Oh, well, should we call it... We should change the name to the... And then people are like, this the amazing Edge TV. It's going to be amazing. Now, nah, always under promise, over deliver. I reckon we should call it the terrible Edge TV. Because <laughs> then when people watch it, they'll be like, oh, this is actually all right. I don't well, know why they're saying terrible so much. This is pretty good. Either, well, either that or we get it legally changed to so amazing as in the title. Yeah, that'd be good. Let's do that. Let's stay positive, guys. The glass is half full. And we're going to have an awesome launch party, which I'm quite excited about, and we need to invite some celebrities along to this. So We, well, we don't know. need to, but we want to. Well, we want to. To make it banging. We want to if we want the bloody photos in the paper. That was actually um, one of our marketing gurus here at The Edge came over to us and said that to us earlier. Because Guy said, why do we need so many celebrities? And she said, because our plan is the celebrities will come and then everyone will want to have a photo with the celebrities yeah. and then they'll put it on their Facebook and then it's like a free billboard. So, we've got to find... <laughs> We've got to find some New Zealand celebrities. The cream of the crap. 0800 The Edge. Let's start talking names. I'm going to throw one out there right now. All right. Matthew Ridge. Damn. Oh, yeah. Got to have him here. And he could bring um, Carly Binding with him. Going to throw out another one. The lady from the lighting direct ads. Oh. Oh. You know that woman who um, who's wearing way too much makeup and she's got the longest hair in the world? Yeah. That long hair is going to get us big time views in the newspaper. Mm-hmm. Can I chuck one out there? Yeah, you the can. The Mad Butcher. Oh, Peter dang! So Peter never misses a party. Sean, who do you think we should be inviting to our party? Um, The guy from the Vodafone ads. Oh, yeah, boy. Oh, yeah, the boy boy from Boy. 
Yeah, the boy boy from boy who's also in the Vodafone ads with the bowl cut. Um, that boy. is a yeah. good idea. Let's get boy. Let's investigate. Let's get boy on the show. Great suggestion. Sean Simon, who do you think we should invite to the Edge TV party? I've got two for you. Oh, yes, you greedy okay. sausage. First one, first one is John Campbell. Yes. And the second one, you'd have to go Suzanne Paul. Oh, oh yeah. Suzanne Paul would be amazing. Ain't no party till Susan Paul gets there. Yeah, you've got to appear. That was a terrible, <laughs> terrible <laughs> jingle. Do you guys remember, you might not remember, but do you remember from the 90s when Suzanne Paul, and Simon, you might remember, when Suzanne Paul put out a party album called The Blue Monkey? Who could forget? I vaguely remember it. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a website called www.youtube.com. Get on there, search The Blue Monkey, and watch Suzanne Paul break it down. It'll be so good. So that's two more for our list. Thanks to Simon. Nadia, who do you think we should invite to the Edge TV launch? So that guy that's off the Don't Drive Drunk, he'll be a bloody legend, adds a Don't Need My Ghost Chips, and he can like wander around. <laughs> oh, okay. yes. Did you just say the black guy? No, no. she said that guy. Oh, thank God. Thank God. I thought you just called him oh the black God. guy. <laughs> oh, she said that guy. You called him that. No, I didn't. I was checking Terrible. that we didn't call him that. That is a great idea, Nadia. We will look and sending them. I, I reckon that we should invite little guy, because then there ain't no party like a little guy party, mm-hmm. as guy would, big guy would say. Yeah. We're throwing a party to celebrate Edge TV, and we need it to be the most banging party in all New Zealand time. Did you just try to do the Uberfax voice? No, I was just doing an excited party voice, the voice that I do when I'm at a party. I just changed my party voice, but I don't even care because I'm so excited. (laughs) That was bad, eh? Anyway. This is the voice that I make when I'm at a party. We're putting together an A-list of New Zealand hot celebs. We've already got the obvious ones. We've already done your Briscoes ladies, your Big Save Furniture ladies. We can have her there, but don't tell her dad she's coming, all right? Because she's ordered too many beds this week. She's grounded for that. Um, I'm going to throw one out there. The um, the the king of all New Zealand celebrities, um, the Nick Minute Man. Oh, Levi Nick Minute Hawkins. Imagine if he showed up and did some Nick Minutes. Yeah. That, that would be pretty good. We could <laughs> invite... Oh, I, Tim Shadbolt. Party. You can't have a party without Tim Shadbolt because then Dang if it. everyone else is having a bad time, he'll be in the coolest smiling, Tina. He's having a good time. Um, do you know who it would be great to have? Valerie Adams. She, she can bring her Olympic medals. I'm sorry. The only party that Valerie Adams is going to turn up to when you're involved is your funeral. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> that was that was quite harsh, but possibly fair. <laughs> Natalie, who Hi. do you think we should invite to a party? Oh, yeah. It wouldn't be a party without Jake the Mask. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jake the Mask. <laughs> <laughs> It would be pretty good, and then if anyone was like out of line, we'd be like, Jake, deal with them, eh? No. Yeah. This is the Will Morrison needs to be there. Yeah, yeah that's, a good, that's a good one. I like that one a lot. Invite Tim Wetter Morrison. Don't invite repeat um, uh, domestic violence abuser Jake the Muscle. Isn't it weird? Can we just talk for a second how weird it is that Jake the Muscle is this cult like New Zealand <laughs> yeah. hero? It's the same as beating up his wife and kids. It's the same as Chopper Reed. Everyone parodies Chopper Reed, and he was a very, very, very bad man. Yeah. All right. Great um, suggestion, yeah. Natalie. Thanks. Bye. Karen, what is your thoughts? I think that you should get Jody Rimmer as your life of the party person. That is a, a wonderful idea. I'm so excited yeah. about having Jody Rimmer at the party. My one problem with that idea is that I'm not sure who Jody Rimmer is. Can you just remind me? <laughs> you have seriously got to be kidding me. No, I, I was... I was about to ask who it was, and then I felt embarrassed because I thought Guy knew. Who's Jodie Rimmer? I, I know who Jodie Rimmer is. She um, uh, played Lionel on Shortland Street. She, well, I actually don't watch Shortland Street, but anyway, um, she is a New Zealand actress. Okay. Yeah, you've, got to, you've got to look her up. She's seriously the last Sharon, of Google it. Bring what, up an image. What TV uh, show was she in? I've got a question. Are you yeah. Jodie Rimmer? No, I'm her stunt double. Amazing! Okay, 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 okay. We can't get Jody Rimmer, but we've got to get Jody Rimmer's stunt double. That oh, would be amazing. Jody Rimmer, she was on the strip. She was also, um, she was on Shortland Street. She no, played she Samara on we don't, Shortland Street. We don't need her because we've got Jody Rimmer's stunt double, and that will do just oh. as well. Plus, you can do stunts. What sort of tricks can oh, you do? I'll tell you what. You, you, you just tell me what you need me to do, and I, I can do it. I can represent. Flaming backflips. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll probably land on my head, but yeah, it's a party. Sweet as it'll make for a better video. <laughs> Alright, see you at the party, Jody Rimmer's stunt double. Hey, can't wait. Stand 
by Sharon and Clint. On the bloody edge. Get ready, everybody. Your mind's about to be blown when we play What's in Guys Mouth. The segment that no one wanted to return is back for another week. Actually, quite a few people are uh, excited about What's in Your Mouth this week because they get excited it's the one part of the show where you can't talk much. Well, that's, um, that's a, a pretty harsh burn, and uh, I'm... I'm quite uh, sincerely offended. If you would like to play <laughs> what's in Guy's mouth, what we do is we put a whole lot of something in Guy's mouth, hashtag not sexual, and you have to guess what it is by calling on 0800 The Edge. If you get it right, we're going to hook you up with Are We Officially Dating on DVD, The Fault in Our Stars soundtrack, and a double pass to go and see 22 Jump Street in the cinemas, which is going to be out on the 12th of June, which Man. is today. Man, that's a mouthful. Speaking of mouthful, Guy, fill your mouth. Fill your mouth up with the things. Okay. Stuff it in. Put a few in there. Not just if you w- can. Not just one. Put, you can fit another one can in. Can you right? get any more in there? <laughs> he can only fit one of these things in. He, I, reckon he it, could, I reckon he could do two. Does it go in any further? Mm. Okay. Okay. Well, mm. Okay. Tell in. us right now on the microphone what's in your <laughs> mouth. Mmm. 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 Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Hmm. <laughs> it's time for the most amazing game you've ever heard. It's what? In guys, mouth. If you would like to play, call us on 0800 The Edge. Guy, what's in your mouth? Mm. 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 Okay, great. Lisa, what do you think is in guy's mouth? A tennis ball. Mm. Is it a tennis ball, guy? Mm-mm. No, it's Did sorry, you, Lisa. It's not a tennis ball. Could you fit a tennis ball in your mouth? Mm, no, I, I reckon you got you, you got a pretty big mouth. Mm, mm, I, can't, oh, I, can't, no. I can't understand you, mate. I can't understand you. Thanks for having a go, Lisa. Atta, what is in guy's mouth? A mandarin. <laughs> is it a mandarin, guy? Mm, no, mm-hmm. it's not a mandarin either. Sorry about that one, Peter. What do you think is in guy's mouth? Oh, is, it, is it apple? An apple? <laughs> is it an apple guy? <laughs> no. No. The, Sorry so about that, good. Peter. So it's the, not. The, good. the clue is, really, that we've said so far, is that we, it was something we thought you could get more than one of in. So we're like, stuff as many as you can. Definitely couldn't get more than one apple in your mouth. No. Amy, what do you think's in Guy's mouth? Is it a giant egg? A giant egg. Is it an egg... Guy? No, it's not a giant Mm-mm. egg. Sorry about that one, Amy. And finally, so hopefully we can get it this time... Katie, what is in Guy's mouth? A giant marshmallow? Yay! It's a giant marshmallow! Yay. Oh, sorry, Guy, is that what's in your mouth? <laughs> it is. You can eat your way out now, Guy. No, you're just going to spit it that out. That was disgu- I almost choked to death. And how did. What is Guy, what's your cause of death? Giant marshmallow asphyxiation. And by the way, guys, the text machine is blowing up with a million people texting in giant marshmallow because you left the giant marshmallow bag right in front of the the bloody what webcam, <laughs> and you people on the webcam screw you for cheating. That's that's against the rules of what's in guys' mouth. Well, luckily we do have a winner in Katie. So Katie, we're going to send you out a copy of the Fault in Our Stars soundtrack, our must-have DVD this week. Are we officially dating? And you are off to the movies to see Twenty Two Jump Street, which is in cinemas today. The scandal's up next. Thank you. Do you want, you want to um, pop another one of those marshmallows in your mouth, there, mate, for a little bit longer? Chuck it Not in. really. No, it was torture. Just, just chuck it in. My jaw's locked. Just ch- <laughs> Don't say just chuck it in. That sounds gross. That's called karma. Guy <laughs> Sharon. And Clint Itch. And you can ask anybody. Go ahead and ask anybody. Yeah, you can ask anybody. Anything, anything, anything. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the studio. I'm so sorry, I just realized I forgot your name. Zoe. I'm so, Zoe, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the studio. A former long haul flight attendant, the wonderful, the amazing Zoe! That's about the level of anonymity we're going to give. Yeah. We're not going to give a last name. No. And also, you've requested that we don't say which airline you used right, to fly yeah. for. But it's a, like a major, it's an international airline. Yeah. 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 It's a long haul. People, um, would, people would know of it, right? Yeah, I think so. Another so. caveat to add to uh, the situation here 90% of the questions we've got through the text machine and on Twitter have been about the Mile High Club. 
So we're going to save those ones. The dirty zone. Like like the p- part of the magazine that you've got is sealed. It's like the sealed section. That's going to be at the end. So save your mile high questions for the last part of the interview. But there are a lot of them, and mm-hmm. we will ask them, and we yeah. have already heard some good stories. Let's go straight to the phone, Shaz, with some questions. Tyler, what's your question for Zoe? Hey, I was just wondering um, if you think it would poss- be possible to still have a relationship in New Zealand and work long haul. And then uh, my other question was, if you reckon you'd be able to study, like, do extramural study or, like, study by distance and still work long haul as well? Yeah, there's a lot of crew that actually would um, do correspondence work because when you go away, you'd be away, you know, in a different country for sometimes two or three days. And yeah. it's a pretty good time to actually just sit down and do your, you know, whatever assignments you've got to do. It's difficult yeah. to, if you were, say, going to a university where, you know, attendance was required just because you might yeah. be home for five days in a row but then you're going to be away for two weeks so uh, yeah. I mean definitely correspondence a lot of crew would do that um, as yeah. for having a relationship uh, definitely some people prefer it uh, it's sort of you're home for three or four days and then you're away for two weeks it really gives you a chance to miss people and uh, it's hard to get on someone's nerves if you're not there every day yeah. Interesting. All right, yeah. I've got a question for you that's come from Instagram. This one is from Gemma Baines. Has anyone ever vomited on you? People vomit all the time. Uh, never <laughs> on me directly, but I have had to clean up definitely my fair sh- uh, amount of vomit. Uh, I once had one passenger who was so sick. The poor guy, he was about, I don't know, 23, had just thrown up all over about three rows, an entire <laughs> cubicle <laughs> in the bathroom. Ah! And unfortunately, uh, that's a glamorous part of our job is, yeah, cleaning up sick. <laughs> oh, and cause speaking before about the relationships when you're doing, like, the long-haul flights and stuff, yeah. you hear about some particular airlines that fly, yeah. and then while they're in these different places, they're also escorts. Have you ever heard of that being true? Uh, I, I've heard of, um, this is kind of like it was a, I don't know, urban myth, but there was a girl who was um, sometimes for training, you don't necessarily train in the country that you live in. Uh-huh. So you'd be in a hotel for, like, maybe a few weeks, and apparently this girl, was she was training to be a flight attendant, and at night she was having guys come to her room, and the company found out about it, and, yeah, she got fired. Wow. wow. Yeah. All right. You see. One that's come up quite often, Zoe, is have you ever come across a pilot that's either super dodgy or that ends up having, like, two families, one in one place, one in the other? Yeah. Uh, so quite a lot of the pilots kind of tended, you know to be somewhat sketchy. Uh, There was this one pilot. He was a a captain who had been flying for years and years and years. And so he would always go away for a few days at a time and then come home. And then it turns out he had retired from flying and he hadn't told his wife. So every time he would go away for a few days... He, she thought he was at work. And so she had this emergency one time, I, I don't know what it was, and she rang up the company and was like, oh, like, where's Barry? And they're like, uh, he retired about six Jesus. months ago. That's oh, amazing. My mind would explode if that happened. That's yeah. terrible. <laughs> it's the worst nightmare. Definitely. Ollie, what's your question for Zoe? Hey, um, I was just wondering if guys often grab or slap your ass as you walk past. Good question. Uh, never, never. Never? Pe- people will, like, never. bump. No, never. People will bump into you all the time and just, like, charge past you and, you know... Not, like, even, not even, like, rugby teams or anything? No, no. Wow. No. This, 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 this Not to stuff. me, anyway. No way. No, a, a question, no, no sorry. A Kara. question from the text machine. Who are the Who is the coolest famous person you've worked with, uh, met while you're working? Um, I've met a few famous people. Um, I've had Nicole Kidman on board twice. Wow. Uh, I served the um, Kings of Leon in first class. Awesome. Uh, Black Eyed Peas, um, uh, Will Ferrell and Steve Carell. Awesome. Um, Were any of them badly behaved? No. no. Spill some goss, we can do it. Honestly, they don't really say that much. They're pretty quiet. They're, they just want to sleep the whole time. They usually get on, put their pyjamas on and go to bed. Because I imagine that Nicole Kidman, would be a, like, Nicole Kidman would be a real biatch. Not at all. Uh, she... she doesn't say too much, but I made her a mango smoothie and she said thanks. Oh, oh. that's nice. Good. <laughs> Question from Nicholas, age nine. What's the scariest thing to happen to you as a flight attendant? Um, I once had um, one of the engines. There, there's a uh, wide body aircraft. There's four engines. And um, it was nighttime and I was sitting down at the back of the plane at my jump seat, which is sort of, you know, um, on the right hand side. And the number engine three, number three engine exploded after oh. takeoff. And I looked out the window. I was, I'd only been flying about maybe four or five months and it was night so all I could see was this big ball of fire oh my god and I thought I was going to die it was traumatic of course 
But um, you just we had to fly around for about an hour and a half dumping fuel, yeah. so we could like land back into the airport you, so, we'd left from. Do you? Because it's your job to keep people calm. Mm-hmm. Do you? Yeah. Do you have a poker face the whole time? Because whenever there's yeah, bumps yeah. or stuff, yeah. I always look yeah. to the flight attendants <laughs> yeah. first, and if they look scared, then I'm like, shit, it must be bad if they look scared. Yeah, because yeah, if, if there's fire out the window, yeah. you'd yeah. be like, okay, everybody, we need you to uh, <laughs> shut your windows now. Yeah. So, is it? A, you have a good poker face. I think so. I mean, I just I, the people that were sitting around me, I said, it's okay, don't worry about it. You know, technically, if there's if there's four engines, we can fly with only two. So. It's just a that, that's good to know. Yeah. I've got a huge question, yeah. okay? Because they always tell you every time when the flight when the plane starts, yeah. in the event of an emergency, that you guys, the yeah. flight attendants, will help me to the emergency. Yeah, is yeah. that true? Absolutely. You sure you wouldn't be? You, I'd be the first mean, person like, off the as, plane. As in, <laughs> as in drag you, or no? We we gonna st- no? But do you do you get off the plane last, or yeah. are you just yeah. like open the exit and get out of there? No, no, get off last. You wait until your zone is clear. And if you think your life is in immediate danger, then you get off. Wow. But, but yeah, we we have to stand there until basically passenger flow has... I could, I could not do that. Zoe, do, do you mind if I ask, why are you former? Why did you stop doing it? Um, it's just, it's really hard on your body. It's it's hard to be away from home so much. I've got two dogs and, you know... Two dogs. Yeah. Good yes, answer. <laughs> Enough says. Enough says. What do you do now? Uh, I'm a residential property manager. Oh, that's oh. quite different. Stop yeah. bragging about it. Yeah. J- just before we went on air, you said the most common question you get asked is something, and I didn't hear you. What's it's your most common question? How do I get upgraded? Okay, good yeah. question. How do, how do you get upgraded? Okay, if you want to know the one guaranteed way to get upgraded is pay for the ticket. Otherwise... <laughs> <laughs> good answer. Answer. I was yeah. so excited. Is so My good. head was running through options yeah. like, say you just got yeah. married, say yeah. you're going to funeral. Honestly, when you get on the plane and you see the flight attendant like, oh, I want to get upgraded, we actually don't have the authority to upgrade anyone on board. Only the manager, like the purser, has that authority. Even then, they're not really supposed to. But my one tip for getting really, really great service on a plane is before you go, go to the supermarket or the dairy or something and buy a little box of chocolates, write a note on it and just give it to the flight attendant and just say, oh, you know, I just wanted to give this to you because I know how hard you work. Anytime anyone ever did that to me, uh, I would go out of my way to look after them. I'd get them pajamas and blankets and no like the way. good headsets. Aww. I'd give them some champagne, you know. Great tip. That yeah. is a great tip. I'm going to use that one. Josh, what's your question? Hey, um, have you ever had to deal with a death um, on board and how did you, how do you, how were you trained to deal with it? Um, people do die from time to time, unfortunately. It's just part of the job. I mean, you're in the air for, you know, 14 hours sometimes. Um, yeah. I haven't had a death on board, but my best friend who, um, she did. And basically, you just have to move the thing near the person away <sighs> if, if they can. And they'll just put a blanket over them. Um, sometimes people, if they die in the bathroom and no one notices them right away, they kind of get rigor mortis and you can't move them. So I've had crew that I know had to lie a body in between, like, the toilet walk passageway. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Otherwise, Jesus. yeah. But they'll, they'll, I mean, the crew will pull them out and they'll do CPR and everything as much as they can. And if you, if they're dead, do you sort of just put a blanket over them until they land, until you land? It's like we, weekend we, of burning. Uh, yeah. we, we put a seatbelt across their lap and across their chest, uh, a blanket, and then an eye shade on them. So they're just like they're chilling out. Like they're it, sleeping. It, yeah. it legitimately is waking at Bernie's yeah. on the plane. Amazing. Yeah. It's flying with Bernie. Imagine yeah. if some if you had a window seat and someone died and then you had to climb over yeah. the dead person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is disgusting. I mean, yeah. Good Thanks, question, Josh. Josh. Adrian, what's your question? Um, yeah, first of all, did anyone get really nervous when guys said, I've got a really huge small pause question? <laughs> <laughs> That, that pause was a little bit disturbing. <laughs> yeah, it freaked us out as well, Adrian. Hey, thank you, Adrian. What, <laughs> what's your question for Zoe? Um, yeah, question from Adrian. At chronological age 40, mental age 9. Um, apparently in some of the Asian countries, they have, they're have teaching the, the ladies how to do Wing Chun or some sort of Kung Fu to like protect you from, I don't know, particularly grabby um, customers, flight people. Yeah, we do. We do get security training. So if anyone ever tried to attack me, um, I could fight them off with a coffee bottom and a tray. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just just basic sort of self defence. Do you, do you think you could take down Guy? Uh, I don't have a coffee bottom, but I could try. <laughs> yeah, I, I know a few moves. <laughs> I reckon you could. We have reached the sexy time. This I'm is all questions see. related to the Mile High Club, and Gary wanted to be up first. <laughs> Gary, what's your question? 
I hope this is not my dad, Gary. Gary! <laughs> Man, I hope this is not my dad, Gary. <laughs> oh, Ga- Gary got a little bit too Hello. excited. Are you there, Gary? Hello. Hello. What's your question? Hello. Hello, Hello Gary. Hi, Gary. Yeah, hi, I'm Rusty driving. Hi, Zoe, how you doing? I'm good, thank you, Gary. How are you? I'm very well, yeah. Hey, look, I just, uh, I've, I've travelled quite a bit in the planes, obviously. I just want to, Zoe, uh, my high club, are you a member? No, I'm not. Sorry. Any opportunities? <laughs> uh, no, to be honest, I don't think I ever got hit on once flying, not once. So no one ever asked your number? Uh, no, you're invisible. No. Amazing. Nice yeah. try, though, Gary. Yeah, no, good try, okay. Gary. All right, mate. Good try, yeah. mate. Thanks for your call. Jennifer, <laughs> what's your question? Um, has he ever caught anyone having sex in the toilet or in their seat? Yes. Or anything? Yes. Um, I've caught a couple in the um, the toilet because we were going past with a cart and the um, there's a button that you push for assistance, like, oh, I need assistance. So, obviously, they've got all their clothes off and they're in a tangle and they accidentally bumped the assistance <gasps> button. Yeah. And so, obviously, I think some, like, it's a little old lady and she's fallen down. So, I'm, like, outside, like, banging on the door, like, hello, and they wouldn't open it. So, uh, there's a way that you can unlock the door from the outside. Uh-oh. Oh, no. So I unlock the door, oh. and it's this couple, and they're both standing in the bathroom, like, naked, like, holding all their clothes, which, ah. I mean, seriously, those cubicles are tiny, and the lighting is so unflattering. I don't know why you bother, <laughs> but that is um, so bad. Yep, and I've seen, um, you know, people getting freaky under the blankets. Yep. <laughs> is the blanket one quite common? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's it's a, it's 14 hours. It seems like a good way to pass the time. It's no. Like, have a bit of a fiddle. <laughs> have a bit of a fiddle. <laughs> Jennifer, we've got to ask, oh, you're on the phone. Have you? Are you in the Mile High Club, or are you thinking about joining? Oh, I think I'm thinking about joining. <laughs> well, now you know. Do it with your clothes <laughs> on, babes. Wear a dress. It's easy access. <laughs> That is that is disgusting. Sorry, so my bad. I've got to inquire a little bit more about this under the sheets action. Yeah. When you say there's hanky panky going on under the sheets, what explicitly do you mean? Well, uh, I what want, else does she yeah. possibly mean that she can say on the radio, guy? I, I once saw a suspicious situation where a girl was sitting up in her seat with her blanket on her lap, and the guy, for some reason, must have he must have lost something between her legs. Oh. And, Amazing! I've got a question. Are there many flight attendants sleeping with pilots? Uh, there's a few, but it's like as far as other flight attendants are concerned, it's very discouraged. Like we call the the um, the pilots tech crew, and uh, if you kind of hang out with them too much, uh, you get called a tech crew mole. It's a very us and them oh, situation. Yeah. Wow. That's really interesting yeah. to me because I thought you'd all be like, because no. they're obviously the highest paid. Yeah, and they stay at different hotels most places. Yeah? Yeah. So, yeah. Very so you can't mix and mingle. Some the, the countries where you stay in nicer hotels, obviously they do stay together and there's certain ports as well which are really big drinking ports where everyone likes to get like really yeah. Uh And then, you know, I think there's a bit more crossover there. All right, and last question, we'll go to Rob. What do you want to know? Rob, yeah, it's me again from yesterday. <laughs> oh, g'day, Rob. What's your question? How you doing? Good, on, good, mate. Ah, oh, good, good. Oh, I just want to know, if that nice flight attendant was, you know, doing her business, doing her job, and she walked in the toilet, well, you know, if there was, like, smoke came out of the toilet, someone was smoking weed in there, what, what would you do? <laughs> Uh, I'd probably get the fire extinguisher. Uh, hey, I thought, I thought, yeah, people could do it. You know, that's part of the more high club, I suppose, apart from the uh, 31. Hey, Rob, is this Rob yeah. from Invercargo who caught up yesterday who had been to prison? Yeah, brother, how you doing? Oh, good day, oh. prison, Rob. Rob, 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 welcome Rob back. don't it's smoke weed on a plane, mate, or you're going back to prison. Yeah. People think you shouldn't well, no, smoke. I'm not, I'm not smoking weed in a plane, you know. I, I can't travel out of the country. Yeah. <laughs> You're for seven years, there you go. All right, that is the end of the AMA. Um, Zoe, thank you so much for coming for in me. and Woo-hoo! contributing. Zoe, yeah. you're fantastic, you. mate. It's been interesting for us. Hopefully, it's been interesting for everybody listening. Yeah. Last, Fascinating. Last question, and this was when we had it yeah. at the start. We meant to ask if people listening want to be a flight attendant. If you've inspired them right now, what's your um, what's your advice? Um, I would start off by getting a job in sort of customer service, anything like that. Uh, I personally wouldn't bother with one of the um, travelers tourism schools from from the training group that I did. Uh, no one had sort of been to one. Yeah. A good thing is um, just apply online for any of the airlines. Go to the interviews, well presented, prepared, look nice. Uh, think of about certain questions. You know, don't. You quit though. Do you recommend doing it? I would recommend, like, it's definitely a good job to do for a few years. Uh, I wouldn't recommend make a life career out of it. Have a backup plan. You Zoe, know? you've been, you you've been wonderful. Thank, Thank you so much. Mate. Thank you so much. Guy Sharon and Clint. Itch. Time for the Guy Sharon and Clint 
vaguely interesting, completely uneducated, and utterly ridiculous introduction and guide to the FIFA World Cup. That's a vuvuzela. Well, that's a, already a bad start because it's in Brazil, mate, and that was those are from South Africa. Um, They've got rid of them already. As you can probably tell, Clint gives little to no care for the FIFA World Cup. I'm pumped for it. Sharon, you pumped? Um, yeah, I guess. I'm pumped about seeing some hot-ass babs. Clint just keeps on saying, um, uh, who cares about it? The answer is, everyone in the world, it's the biggest sporting event. Except probably in New Zealand. Some no. people do. Like, some people care about f- um, football in New Zealand. It's the, the majority most popular. Of New- the majority of New Zealanders don't even know that it's called the Football World Cup. They call it the Soccer World Cup. I call it that, but that's just an American thing. Like, Americans call it soccer, so we're calling it no soccer. No one cares about football less than Americans, mate. In New Zealand, more people play soccer slash football than they do play rugby. Yes, a good point. And I can also bum you out in saying... In the biggest group of visitors they're having in Brazil are Americans. Ooh! 15%. Hey, let, let, help Guy and I prove our point even more. Text to 3343 if you're into the FIFA World Cup. No, no, it's sweet to be into it. I'm just saying I'm not. Okay, well, you need to be because it's happening and I'm going to be talking about it every day because <laughs> I am. I know nothing about football. I actually still call it soccer and people who like football hate it when you call it soccer but I don't, I'm not that interested in that. Soccer is a way cooler name than football. We need to... Um, we need to. what it's called. We, you're either pro football or you're not. It's, I just think soccer is a cooler name. There's some balls and you kick with your foot, so it makes sense. All right, so the favourites are Brazil, uh, Spain and Argentina, but no team outside South America has ever won in South America, so that's quite interesting for a start. So that makes that makes Spain almost out of the equation, to be honest, because it's going to be 32 degrees in some of these stadiums. Now, my question to you guys is, who's your team? Who are you picking? Um, ooh. Sharon, you're not allowed to say New Zealand because um, they're not in it. I'm going to pick Brazil. The, oh, the, okay, go for the outright the, favourite. The, the obvious favourite. Well, isn't that who Ronaldo plays for? <laughs> okay, so what you did there is you named a soccer player who was famous like 10 years ago. Yeah, because that was the last time I watched soccer. But there is the one of the most famous players in the world at the moment is called Ronaldo again, but he's from Portugal. Would you like to choose Portugal? He's very good looking. Look um, him up right now. He's on the poster, on the back of the poster. Okay. I would like to choose the guy that's currently on the cover. Of, yeah, that guy. That's the guy. He's Ronaldo. On, he's on Vogue at the moment. Yep. Isn't that what I just said? So you're into, you know, you said Brazil... <laughs> <laughs> no, You're supporting said- Portugal. Okay. Oh. Here's a question. Do you know where Portugal is in the world? Um, It's a long way away from here. Okay, correct answer. Um, uh, Clint, who are you supporting, mate? Who are you backing? Korea. <laughs> Co- Korea. <laughs> north or south? Mm, not north. North isn't in it, so <laughs> you exactly. go south. That is an appalling choice. I would have been. I would have been more impressed if you said um, Iran. To be honest. Wow. What, what about? Um, well, I can't even say it. Bosnia Herzegovina. Is that oh, how you say it? Yeah, sign me up for them. <laughs> Bosnia Herzegovina. I can't even say it. Oh, I'm a shocker. Um, just for the record, my team is going to be either Ivory Coast. Chile or Ghana? Who do you reckon? Ghana, because it sounds like chocolate. Dun- um, uh, Duncan Ghana as well. <laughs> oh, Duncan Ghana. He could be the official um, mascot of yeah, Ghana. You should go for Ghana. We yeah, need to, we Ghana. I'm choosing Ghana, actually. Ghana's my team. <laughs> we need to get in behind Ghana. Those are our picks. And I guess we're going to do some vague and terrible updates for the Rugby uh, Soccer World Cup. Man, I'm bad. <laughs> for the Soccer FIFA. World Cup. It kicks off tomorrow, 8 a.m. It's Brazil versus Croatia. It's going to be huge. Guy, Sharon, and Clint. And yesterday, Guy Williams got to drink some breast milk. How are you feeling today after oh How Does God. It Feel? I, ha- I still haven't seen the video. Has that come out yet? Yeah. Yeah, you look amazing. You look so cute in a nappy. This is the... Because when I, when I started at the edge, there was genuine... I was, like, nervous about having to do really humiliating things. And I didn't even think about this one, because normally when we um, come up with an idea for How Does It Feel or someone submits one or something like that, I always, I always think... That it could be me doing it, so I've got to be careful. This one I didn't think about at all. I kind of didn't know we were doing it. Just assumed it would be someone else. When the wheel hit me, and I found out that I was going to have to dress like a baby wearing a human adult diaper (laughs) and drink (laughs) real breast milk that I don't know where it's come from, (laughs) I'm quite stressed out about it. And the video is just so humiliating. I genuinely don't, don't want my friends to see it. Okay. Because I'm, I'm genuinely embarrassed. It's the low point of my career. It's funny, though. It's it, it is amazing. You, you, I'm cradling you, and you just look so angry and unimpressed, but at the same time, you just look like a grumpy little baby in your cute little nappy. It's so funny. When I started doing stand-up in Wellington, 
I kind of always saw myself as being like some sort of Bill Hicks or Louis C.K. like <laughs> Dark Knight, <laughs> travelling the world and talking to drunken strangers. And now here I am at the edge, dressed as a baby, and I'm just like, <laughs> what am I doing? It didn't take long either. We haven't been doing this show for a year, and your credibility is shot to hell. <laughs> if you want to see this video, go check it out now on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash edge afternoons. It is a sea to believe. This it's was yeah, This wasn't actually meant to be like a, a emotional checkup on you, just a physical. There were no long-lasting repercussions of drinking the milk because you were nervous. I was uh, worried I was going to get herpes like I read on Google Doctor, but um, thus far I am okay, but still don't know. Uh, are you uh, telling me that Google Doctor was wrong? Yes. That never happened. Don't worry, mate. Your herpes may just be dormant at the moment. And there's also no guarantee that came from the milk. The Guy Shannon and Clint Podcast.